In this video you guys are going to be introduced to Newton's third law of motion. Let's first review a little. We've already talked about Newton's first two laws of motion. Newton's first law of motion it states that an object in motion will remain in motion and an object at rest will remain at rest unless acted on by an outside force. This is something that we learned in our bowling ball obstacle course activity. We summarize it by saying something will keep a constant velocity it will keep moving at the same speed in the same direction or if it's at rest it will remain at rest if the sum of the forces equals zero meaning if we add up all the forces on an object or if there's no forces on an object that object will remain at rest or remain moving at a constant speed in our last lab we just learned that when we're looking at and investigating acceleration that acceleration is equal to the sum of the forces divided by the mass as measured in kilograms and this is really the equation form of Newton's second law of motion. It shows that the acceleration of an object is proportional to the sum of the forces, meaning if the sum of the forces gets larger, the acceleration will get larger. It also shows that the acceleration is inversely proportional to its mass, meaning if the mass gets larger, the acceleration will get smaller, or if the mass gets smaller, the acceleration will get larger. Now, Newton's third and final law of motion is something that you learned back in middle school. I bet you can even finish this statement. For every action there is what? An equal and opposite reaction. This is something that you paired it in, high, in uh, middle school and probably understood, but the way this is worded and the, the word action and reaction actually leads to a lot of confusion and people like Oprah saying some pretty weird things. So we're here to learn about one of the most important laws in physics and in life. It is my, I would have to say, my favorite law. We see it every day. Some people call it karma. Some call it the golden rule. I say it's a golden rule on steroids. Some say it's, uh, you know why? Because it's not do unto others as you have them do unto you. It really is whatever you do is already done. The moment you do it, it's already done. Okay, other people call it, you know, what goes around comes around. But in physical science, it's called Newton's Third Law of Motion. Now, karma is this idea that you get what you deserve. If you do good things, good things will happen to you. Or if you do bad things, there's something about the universe that dictates that bad things will happen to you. Now, despite what Oprah thinks, Newton's Third Law does not equal karma. So what is Newton's third law? So we said that this word action and reaction, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction is confusing. Let's replace those words action and reaction with the word force. So for every force there's an equal and opposite force. Newton's third law doesn't talk about doing good things and bad things, it only talks about forces, pushes or pulls. Now just to clarify when it says that for every force there's an equal and opposite force uh, that word equal means if you push on something with one size force you're gonna feel that same size force back so it's equal in size and opposite direction if you push on a wall to the right with let's say five pounds of force the wall is gonna push back against you with that same five pounds of force in the exact opposite direction to the left I'm gonna let Dr. Carlson from Purdue University demonstrate this for us we're here at Purdue University to talk about for every force, there's usually an equal and opposite force pushing the other way. So, for instance, if I push against this wall with my feet, the wall pushes back on me, and I can use that to shoot myself down the hallway. We don't even need a wall to push against. I can push against this medicine ball and throw it that way, and it'll push back at me, and I'll go that way. And this is a lot like how a jet engine works. It actually grabs air and throws it backwards, and that would push an airplane forward. So if I throw this hard enough, I should go backwards. But it's pretty tricky. And I'm traveling backwards at the speed of almost nothing. This doesn't just work with heavy things. We can take lots and lots of light things and throw them really fast, and they should push back on me as I push forward on them, and I should still fly backwards. Unfortunately, the question becomes, can I throw them fast enough, or basically push on them hard enough to make myself go backwards? And they're pretty light, so maybe not. But let's give it a try. Here we go. Ow. 
ready? Yes. We can now throw even smaller things. We've got a tank of carbon dioxide gas here. And if we let it out, it's speeding out that way. And so it has to be put, it's being pushed out that way. And so since it's pushed out that way, there has to be a force pushing back on us in order to throw it. And so if I throw basically lots and lots of tiny molecules of carbon dioxide, I can go backwards really fast like a jet engine. I just have to throw them faster. Here we go. Three, two, one. The end. Okay, thank you Dr. Carlson, uh, Purdue University, and the National Science Foundation for that. Another example of Newton's third law would be a car impacting a wall. During that collision, the wall feels a force to the left, so it's going to push the car back to the right. Regardless of the size of the force during the impact, they both feel the same size force. The same is true during a car-to-car a -car collision as well. During the impact, they each feel the exact same size force. This might be obvious with two objects that are the same size, but even with a semi and a car, the more massive semi feels the same size force as the lighter, less massive car. You might be saying, wait a minute, Mr. Demick. I know that during a collision, the semi is going to slow down a lot less than the car will and will be affected a lot less than the car during that collision. And you're right, but the effect of the collision doesn't tell us how big the force is, it just tells us how big the acceleration is. Remember, even though they feel the same size force, because the semi has a larger mass, the same size force has a smaller effect and will have a smaller acceleration. That's what Newton's second law tells us. Here's an interesting example of Newton's third law in nature. The basilisk is called the Jesus Christ lizard because it can walk, well, really run on water. It bicycles its hind legs and the tail becomes a counterweight. In order for the lizard to move across the level water, it has to push down on the water and the water pushes back up on the lizard, counteracting gravity. The concept behind it might be backed by physics, but as hard as we try, we just can't do it. Now that we've seen some pretty interesting examples of Newton's third law, let's look at a few questions that you might be asked on, let's say, a test or a quiz, or maybe a semester exam. So let's look at a specific example where the forces are on an object uh, that show or illustrate Newton's third law. We take, for instance, a rocket which is accelerating upward, so getting faster and faster and faster while moving up. Well, to draw the forces on that rocket during that instant, we know since the rocket has mass, there's a force of gravity in the rocket by the Earth pulling it downward. And since the rocket is accelerating upward, we know it must be feeling some other push or pull upward that's greater in size than the force of gravity, so the sum of the forces points up. So we draw arrow, an upward arrow larger, and let's think about what's causing that upward force. We already saw in the video before that when a gas is shot backwards, uh, that gas actually pushes the object forward. In this case, the rocket is expelling the gas downward, so it's essentially being forced downward, so the gas is forcing the rocket upward. So we're going to label that upward force as a force of push on the rocket by the gas. The gas is actually pushing that rocket upward. Now we can go one step further. Newton's third law tells us that the forces have to be the same size. So if the gas feels a thousand newtons of force downward, the rocket feels that exact one thousand newtons of force upward. They're equal in size and opposite in direction. Here's a second example. When a fist is used to break a board, uh, the board starts at rest and accelerates downward. Uh, if we th look at look at the hand, the hand is moving downward, and as it makes contact with the board, or as it's breaking the board, it slows down. So let's draw the forces on the hand while it's breaking the board and while it's slowing down. The hand has mass, so like the rocket, it feels a pull of gravity down. And if the hand is slowing down, that may that means there must be some other force upward on the hand that's larger in size than the force of gravity. If the hand is moving down, downward, and slowing down, that means the sum of the forces has to point up. Well, let's think about what, what could be pushing or pulling on the hand in the upward direction while it's breaking the board. Well, if the hand is pushing on the board, we know that Newton's third law says 
that the board must be pushing up on the hand. So we're going to draw an upward arrow larger than the force of gravity and we're going to label that it's the force of push on the hand by the board. So the board is pushing up on the hand as the board feels that force. It's going to push back and it's going to slow that hand down. So we can also say, go one step further, let's just say that the hand pushes down on the board with 80 newtons of force. So if we read that sentence on the bottom, it says if the hand pushes down with 80 newtons of force on the board, the board has to push up with the same size force, 80 newtons, on the hand, says Newton's third law. Our last example involves a skateboarder. So a skater pushes backward against the ground to accelerate forward on the skateboard. If you've ever ridden a skateboard, it's actually kind of interesting. In order for you to go forward on a skateboard, you actually have to push backwards on the ground. Well, what's really happening in this situation? Well, let's draw a force diagram uh, for the skateboarder. Okay, The skateboarder has mass, so there's a force of gravity on the skateboarder by the earth pulling down. The foot's on the ground and flexing the ground, and so the ground's going to be pushing up with a normal force, equal in size to the force of gravity. And if the skateboarder is pushing back against the ground, we know that Newton's third law says the ground has to be pushing back in the opposite direction of the skateboarder. Uh, and that actually happens because of friction. So we're going to call that forward push, the, the force that's accelerating the skateboarder to the right in the forward direction. We're going to call that the force of friction on the skater by the ground because the ground's actually pushing the skateboarder forward. Only because the skater pushed back on the ground, therefore the ground pushed the skater forward. And if the skater pushes to the left with 20 newtons of force on the ground, we know that the ground has to push to the right with the same size force, 20 newtons on the skater to the right.